Postal Service issues the World War II Medal of Honor Forever stamps on Veterans Day in Washington, D.C. More than 16 million Americans served in the armed forces during World War II. 464 were singled out to receive the Medal of Honor. Of that, nearly half died due to their heroic actions to receive the award after their death. Eight are alive today. The Postal Service is issuing the stamps depicting the Medals of Honor and also including photographs of the living recipients on the stamp sheet as an appropriate way to recognize the living as well as paying tribute to all 464 recipients whose names are included in the World War II Medal of Honor Forever Stamp Prestige Folio. And now let's look at some of the faces and hear the tales of these World War II veterans. The first is Wilburn Ross. Let me tell you a little bit about his story. In October 1944, after Private Ross's company had lost all but three men while fighting the enemy in France, he positioned his machine gun in front of the enemy and began, began to absorb their attack. During more than five hours of combat, Private Ross killed or wounded 58 enemy soldiers and saved the rest of his company. The other Medal of Honor recipient here today is George Cicado, who also happens to be a retired member of the Postal Service. In 1944, October, Private Cicado's unit was pinned down by heavy enemy fire in France. He launched a one-man rush that inspired the platoon to charge and destroy the enemy. The result, Private Cicada killed 12, wounded two, and personally captured four enemy soldiers. 16 million Americans served, 400,000 died. You have received the ultimate honor. Could you tell, tell us what you're feeling about that? I can't believe that I had to go through all this for that. But I did want to prove to them that I am an American. And I, Although I look just like the enemy, but I am of Japanese descent. But uh, to prove my loyalty, I would sign up for the Air Force, and, but ended up in the infantry and went out to Italy and France. Got wounded, nine months in the hospital, came home, discharged. Living here today, this is a wonderful world, you can't believe it. Nothing like the USA. Could you, could you just tell us about that, that day, that, uh, what, what happened, the events that then made you now with this Medal of Honor? What happened is, my friends, the Germans started to uh, come across and my, I told my buddies to watch out for the Germans. And he stood up and he says, where? And he got shot. So I crawled over to him and picked him up. And he died in my arms. And I, 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 it made me so mad and I cried and everything. I was going to get the party that shot me and shot him. So I charged the hill and the Germans tried to take the hill back. and. The, and they were heading for the top of the hill, so I had to charge after them, and I shot 12 of them. And they came up to this cliff they couldn't climb, so then they dropped their rifles and they surrendered, and I captured 37 prisoners came home. To this day, I don't know how. If I had to do it over again, I don't think I would have done that if I was in my right mind. Thank you. 1943, I, I became 18 years old, left the house January 29th. I was 18 years old, November 11th, 19, uh, uh, <laughs> but anyway, first day I, I left, it was about five or six feet of snow in the front. I had to walk up to the station and by myself, didn't know anybody. <laughs> got out of the train and went down, down the city for physical. And from there on, we went to uh, New York, sworn in, and 
quick one, two, three. Six months we're overseas. One, two, five. Five. The hardest part of going overseas was going on a convoy in the North Atlantic on December the 6th, and where all those ships were, uh, the door set was sunk in that area with the, with the, with the, with the four chaplains that gave their life to the, to the, the, the door set was sunk in that area. And that's the, we went through that area on an old beat up uh, uh, refurbished battle uh, transport ship. They made it, it, was, it was an old ship, but God, I, 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 that's the hardest part of going into the war. That's right there, that, 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 that day, day. It, was, it was terrible, but we made it though. The convoy made it, that the whole air force made, went up that way that day. Uh, 1943. Uh, but thank God I came. We made it. That's it. We went over there. Some boys, like Tom Brokaw says, they took our lives. They didn't give the lives. They took the boys' lives. That Tom Brokaw special. They took their lives. They didn't give their lives away. That's what you have the poor boys that landed on D-Day. Yeah. They took their lives. Uh, God bless them, everyone. Thank you very much, man. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I, I was in the First Marine Division, and uh, at Peleliu in Okinawa, and North China, and uh, I, uh, I don't have a lot to say. <laughs> I, I hear, I hear some of these people saying we did the greatest generation, but then I look at some of our offspring and I say, no, we're not. We did something wrong. <laughs> Uh, you're, you're not going to like that, but that's what I feel about it. Yeah, I went in the Army in 1942 and got out in 1946. And I served in the European Army, and I was a Tuskegee flyer. I enjoyed flying, and I've made a lovely day. Thank you. Sometime in the 1st Air Force, uh, towing targets out over Atlantic City for the fighter planes that you'd had. Then flew, went over to Hickam Field in Hawaii uh, near the end of the war and spent some time over there, flight engineer on B-24s and uh, flying around over there getting ready maybe to go to Japan after Army occupation. <laughs> but, uh, later on I did get some experience. Uh, I was in Vietnam uh, in 74 and 75. I happened to work working for our government. Uh, I was over there when I had two sons in the uh, Vietnam conflict. One in the Special Forces. He, he was a captain in the Green Berets and the other shot the last shot at the end of the war in uh, Vietnam, my son. What was the difference between those two wars? Complete difference, complete difference. The World War II, even the veterans uh, were well honored, and but uh, except for the Vietnam, it was terrible. Uh, different, different. Uh, Hopefully, that'll never happen again. I hope so. It's, 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 it's tremendous. Are, are you very active with the uh, with the group? We're going to the wall after this service because we had a trip back to Vietnam with the group from the wall uh, and General McCaffrey three years ago, and uh, it was quite an experience. We even met with the Vietnam, uh, Vietnam Veterans uh, Association, and that was a great experience, comparing our veterans, comparing their veterans, where they were at the same time. We had one uh, of our boys was at Da Nang at the same time, so they felt that they must have been shooting at each other. It was a tremendous experience. It, it, was, it, was, it was a healing trip. It's really something. This is uh, my dad, World War II veteran, Ward Farley, out of Utah, Four Corners, USA, and my mother here. And uh, he served in the European Theater. And we're enjoying our visit here at the World War II Memorial and enjoying the sights of Washington, D.C. Thank you. Yeah, I served at several air bases in this country during the Second World War. And I ended up being a flight engineer on B-25 bombers. <laughs> and that was a great airplane. Still is. And I had a ride on one 
August 31st of this year, after all these years, and that was a tremendous experience to be in one of the those magnificent machines. Okay. So that's about it. <laughs> I, I helped keep the airplanes flying, I'll put it that way. My dad kept the airplanes flying. Also. Good. Well, yes, yes. well, we had a lot of airplanes which we built in a big hurry with people with no previous manufacturing experience who came in and off farms, houseways out of the kitchens and built the best war planes of the Second World War and factories that were built in a hurry. That's what happens in this country when everybody pulls in the same direction. And I wish we could do that again. We need to do that again. Thank you. Customers have until January 11th, 2014 to obtain the first day of issue postmark by mail. Affix the stamps to envelopes of your choice, address the envelopes to yourself or others, and place them in larger envelopes addressed to Medal of Honor Stamps, Special Cancellations, P.O. Box 92282, Washington, D.C. 20090-2282. After applying the first day of issue postmark, the Postal Service will return the envelopes through the mail. There is no charge for the postmark up to a quantity of 50. For more than 50, there is a 5 cent charge per postmark. All orders must be postmarked by January 11, 2014. I'm Crystal Hart reporting from the National World War II Memorial in Washington, D.C. on Veterans Day. Hope you've enjoyed the show and thanks for watching.